Hello, folks. Welcome back to World War Two TV and an impromptu Woody's thoughts. A um, couple of things. One, I just want to say that th three or four weeks ago, I went through a bit of a slump motivation wise. Um, the channel is still progressing, but sometimes I feel it isn't progressing uh, as much as the caliber of the guests deserve and views are going down. I exper experimented with shorts for a few weeks and shorts are quite good, but they also um, don't bring you any revenue in terms of advertising compared. Well, they bring you a lot less than the long format shows. And sometimes there's a talk among creators that shorts actually distract people and take them away from your long content. So I, I did that for a while, brought in lots of extra views, but I don't know that it was necessarily helping uh, the, the channel kind of push forward. So uh, I've relaxed on the shorts for a bit, but I also had a cold that lasted two or three weeks, maybe four weeks. That kind of hit my motivation a bit. So I was going through a bit of a slump. Um, I'm picked up again now. I did a great week long tour with some uh, a group of uh, visitors from America. Um, the World War II TV April Normandy tour. There's another one in October. If you're interested in touring in Normandy with me, uh, get in touch and I'll tell you about the October one. But I'm happy to say that my motivation has increased recently, which is good. I got through the slump okay. I always point out in these little things that if you're watching the channel regularly and you appreciate what we're doing, please consider becoming a member. At the very least, make sure you're subscribed. More than 60% of the viewers of my content are not actually subscribed to the channel. Uh, if even half of those 60% became subscribers, that would push me over the 100,000 subscribers benchmark, which is a big uh, milestone on YouTube. It helps with the algorithm. It helps bring you more viewers, more subscribers. So uh, if you're watching all of our content but not subscribed, please, please consider making that little leap and pressing that button. If you want to go further and become a YouTube channel member, that helps us out a lot, or particularly uh, Patreon. And the links to Patreon are always available on our shows. Anyway, the reason I'm a bit more motivated now is I've been planning lots of shows. Uh, I'm right up to planning into mid and late June right now. They're not all listed on YouTube yet. So next week, we have an Eastern Front week. Um, I say next week. One of the shows is actually this afternoon or uh, the morning, depending on where you are in the world. Holly Harris is coming on. She was on last year talking about her grandfather in the 8th Air Force. Now she's extending her research into the experience of POWs out in the Konigsberg, sort of uh, Baltic area. Uh, that'll be really fascinating. That's a 4 p.m. UK time today. Then we've got David Stahl on tomorrow, the incredible New Zealand historian who lives in Australia, talking about four of Panzer, uh, the Panzer commanders. Uh, we know about Kaderian, but the other three will be less no well known to you, all through the um, correspondence they uh, did with their wives. Uh, so what they were really thinking about the German army, et cetera, et cetera. That'll be a, a revelationary show. Um, then we have David Harrisville examining just how Nazi was the average soldier. So looking into the uh, the uh, the ideology and how committed and fanatical the average German was. And uh, spoiler alert, the answer will be it's complicated. Um, and more stuff. We've got other things. We've got a show about Churchill and Stalin. We've got Pip Prip Buttar coming back on talking about a January 1945 campaign. And then after that, so two weeks of mostly build up to D-Day content uh, with a few other shows kind of filling in the gaps, people that I've wanted to get on for a while. Um, Obviously, it's the 80th anniversary of lots of battles this year, um, D-Day being one of them, and I, there will be quite a lot of content in June. I don't know how, how much there'll be in the actual week of the anniversary because I don't know yet exactly what I'll be doing and where I'll be going. I've kind of kept myself free for media work, and none has actually come in yet, but I may be out about the sites trying to do some kind of on-the-spot interviews with people. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but... Certainly up to about June the 1st or 2nd, there'll be shows on World War II TV and starting again on about June the 9th and 10th, there'll be there'll be regular shows. And in the bit in the middle, I'm not yet sure. So amongst the D-Day shows will be um, uh, the 29th Division preparing for the invasion. There'll be some stuff about the uh, air cooperation between uh, the RAF and the Army. Lots of great things coming your way. But really, the purpose of this little chat now is to talk about my Monte Cassino series I've been working on the last week or so. I'm calling it a Monte Cassino series. Actually, it's going to be about the wider fighting in Italy from about sort of February, March 1944 up to about um, June. So we're taking it to after the Monte Cassino battle. And um, I'm really excited about it. And this is really what I want to get across to people. If you're if you're hesitant about subscribing to World War II TV or you're thinking, oh, well, I quite like what they do, but I don't want to be a patron. I don't want to be a supporter. I just want to remind you just the caliber of the guests I'm bringing you. Um, there are lots of great history channels on World War II. I work with some of them. There's some great content coming your way and some great people putting out content. What I do 
is I bring you a variety of different historians. So people from across the, the globe uh, with different viewpoints, some are academic, some are more kind of hobbyists, some come at, from, come at it from a kind of a geopolitical point of view, some from the kit point of view. So right now, I'm just going to explain a little bit about the shows we've got coming up. So these are the, the graphics I've been making uh, for the for the um, for the series. I haven't finished making graphics, haven't finished getting the shows lined up yet, but it's just an example of what we're coming. Um, good question from Andreas there. It's always difficult to get people to give the German point of view, especially it from German historians. I've made a couple of contacts recently. Uh, uh, Bastian Williams is coming on next week to talk about the Battle of Konigsberg, but generally it's one of the areas I struggle um, finding German historians. It's not that they don't want to talk about World War II. Sometimes it's because they're kind of worried about the live format. And if you're a German historian, talking about World War II is complicated, it's nuanced, you can get accused of, you know, uh, being pro-Hitler or whatever. So it's it's very complicated. So I struggle to get German historians. I would like to do more about the German point of view. I have no shows scheduled yet specifically about the German point of view, although I have got one show scheduled about how the Allies dealt with um, tiger tanks. So there's a new book out about how the allies coped with tiger tanks across all theaters and the guest peter is coming on to particularly address the knocking out of, it, of tiger tanks in italy using it to kind of promote and advertise his 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 new book so i'll just go through some of these slides and talk a little bit about them for a couple of minutes so alan allport you know alan on the channel numerous times before so this could be the first show in the series and the reason it's going to be the first one is going to put the casino campaign or the italy campaign into a wider context alan's going to talk about what was going on in the mediterranean what was happening with shipping glo globally where fdr and churchill's relationship is all that kind of stuff just to kind of um remind people why there was a front in italy and some of the debates about you know, as churchill said the soft underbelly of europe all that kind of stuff so that'd be the first show just to kind of bring people in who are, who are less familiar with the Italian campaign and why it was happening and, and, and that kind of thing. So that'll be really good. What are you doing up at 2.30 in the morning, Lorelai? That's a ridiculous time to be up, up but um, welcome aboard. Um, this is the, 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 the kind of the, the mainstay of the series. It's going to be deep dives into particular aspects of the four battles of Monte Cassino. And if you didn't know there were four battles, there were, well, then keep on watching the series because you'll learn that there are four main battles for Casino. Although of course the series will also cover some of the campaigns kind of adjacent to Casino. Uh, I'll more on that later. So Jeff Danby has been on before talking about the American third division, but his books about the 756 Tampa town. And this is what I mean about bringing you the, the best of the best. If I want to approach a subject, I have, I try and find the person who has written the book or has written a series of books about that particular unit, that division, that campaign, the recent studies. I mean, obviously, some of the books written about these campaigns, uh, the authors died 20, 30 years ago. That's very um, frustrating for me when I'm looking up a unit and I find out there's a fantastically reviewed book. I think, oh, great, I'll get that guest on. They, they, they died in 1973 or something. It's very frustrating. But Jeff Danby, there's no one who knows the 756 Tampa Town better than him, so he will be coming on and talking about that. So so that's the kind of thing we're doing. Um, this is the one about Tiger Tanks. So Peter's going to come on and talk about the, the way in which the Allies knocked out Tigers, so the air power, um, anti-tank weapons, et cetera, et cetera. So that one's slightly from the German point of view, but but not really. Morning, uh, morning Rich at the Vickers MG Collection Research uh, Association. If you don't know what they're doing, uh, find their website, find their social media profiles. Rich has been doing incredible work cataloging all sorts of information about Vickers machine guns and manuals and videos. And you can see videos on his website uh, about live firing Vickers. So Rich, I've known for longer than I care to remember. If you don't know who, what he's doing, check him out. Um, so that's that's why the shows are coming up. This is another one. Jeffrey Plowman is a, is a New Zealander. He came on before talking about uh, the uh, Cavendish Road assault. He's now taking on the third battle of Monte Cassino, again, from the armoured point of view. So there will be details about the Germans, but it's specifically this one from the from the, the our allied tanks point of view. This is the one I'm, I mean about kind of the kit approach. Gareth, his, new, uh, his first book is coming out about a particular smock used by, as you can see on the title there, infantry brigades of the British 6th Armoured Division made from Italian camo they captured. And there's a reenactor there wearing it. I know that reenactor. It's Tom Sellen. He used to live and work in Norm. He's a tour guide. So that's, that's about a particular type of... Um, uh, a gear that was used in the Italian campaign. That's the kind of niche stuff I do uh, on the channel that's 
you know, you, we've gone from Alan Allport giving a kind of a global view to this, a very deep dive on a particular uniform item by uniform item worn by a particular, you know, infantry unit in the Italian campaign. Um, this I'm really pleased about because if you know what I'm doing, um, I try and always bring guests on from across the globe. I've had guests from, I think it's 39 different countries so far on the channel. Um, and so far, what just one South African, but James is a, another historian who lives and works in South Africa. And his book is, is, is about 20 years old now, about the 6th South African Armoured Division um, who fought in the battle. So he's going to do a deep dive on, on them, um, history, because you'll find out that they were a new division uh, taken mostly from survivors of two infantry divisions that fought in northwest africa and then they were made into an armor division so that'll be really interesting i'm looking forward to speaking to james so a deep dive into south africans um this one i'm, I'm really pleased that not only because uh danila danila is a, is a is a woman and i try and bring as many women on to talk about world war ii as possible but she's also been a guide in the bronte Center area for 20 years she's taken back um uh um, veterans and their families, and, and that'll be a really good one, just to see her perspective of how the battlefield has changed, what people are taken away when they come there in terms of understanding. Do they go with lots of knowledge? We'll find out. That'll be more of a chat with her um, rather than a kind of presentation. I'm really looking forward to seeing that one. And yes, you'll find out, Fox Talk, Romeo 25, whether or not it was dodgy wearing Italian camo. Um, that's one of the things that's come up with the, the Normandy show we did about the uh, the the American camouflage that some people thought looked a little bit like the SS camouflage. And we kind of debunked that a little bit. Um, thank you for the nice word, Alistair Clark. This is a very cool and unique channel. It's been good to see it go from strength to strength, an amazing online resource. That's really good. If a few more people could say things like that, that'd be fantastic for us. Um, that's exactly what we're trying to do here, become a resource. Over a thousand shows on this channel now. Um, about 970 something live ones and another 50 or 60 pre-recorded ones, which, there was a point when I thought that getting to 100 shows would be amazing, um, and now we're over 1,000. Anyway, so that's going to be a really good show with a, with a tour guide, battlefield guide, doc, a doctor. She's a proper military historian. She's not just some random person picking up uh, a, a tourist off a, off a bus and, and randomly walking about reading off a, of a, of a bit of paper that we get in Normandy. She's a proper qualified historian, so I'm looking forward to that one. Of course, you can't do a show about the, the Canadians in uh, the Italy campaign without bringing Mark back on. Mark has been on the channel several times. He goes on Brad's OTD military history channel a lot. Mark is the, the godfather of Canadian history. So the Leary Valley is kind of, it's not the Battle of Monte Cassino, but it's associated with, it's going on alongside. Uh, the, the, the Monte Cassino campaign ties up with the, the Rome campaign. So Mark will be coming back on to talk about all their bridging and fighting across the valley there. That'll be fantastic. Um, so looking forward to that one. Another one, uh, Frank is also a tour guide. He, he He's British, but he's a retired lieutenant colonel, I believe. And he goes to Monte Cassino a lot. And he's doing one about the third um, the third battle. Kind of ties in with what Jeff did about Cavendish Road a, a couple of years ago. But I don't have any problem revisiting subjects with a different historian to give a different point of view. That's always good. Um, so looking forward to that one. Uh, leadership, Mark Clark. So if you watch the James Holland show about Salerno a few weeks ago, J James Holland is a massive Mark Clark fan. Um, a lot of people don't like Mark Clark. He kind of falls into that MacArthur Montgomery category of being a bit Marmite. Um, this uh, show, John wrote a book about Mark Clark about 10 years ago. He's considered one of the world's top experts on Mark Clark. So we're looking at him, talking to him. We'll also be um, discussing the Mark Clark historiography. And as I just said, he's someone who goes up and down in popularity. And I'll be interested to know what he thinks about James Hollands and a re-evaluation of Mark Clark. That'll be interesting. Um, thank you for that, Neil. So, um, I, I've not met Frank personally, but I've, I, I hear very good things. Um, and I've heard, well, I've heard him on um, uh, Why We Fight, the, the, the podcast with, uh, with, with Sasha. So that's really good. Um, so that'll be about leadership. This one, uh, another Italian guest, uh, Roberto, is heavily involved in all sorts of associations for commemorating Monte Cassino. And then he may do, in fact, a second appearance, the one we've actually worked out so far. He's going to come on and talk about the civilian aspect, um, the rebuilding, the bombing, the refugees. Um, 
you know, you can't talk about the battle in Italy without talking about the the, the effect on the locals and uh, thousands of people bombed out. And so he's going to take us through that experience of of, of what the poor locals were, were going through. So remember, they, they you know, they the, Italy has switched sides. It's become an ally uh, by the time the Monte Cassino campaign takes part, having been a, a part of the Axis earlier. Uh, but now they're just victims. And um, that looking forward to speaking to Roberto about that. Um this one I'm really excited about. I, I, I kind of hinted on Twitter the other day that there was a guest I didn't think I'd get because Matthew Parker, if you don't know who he is, Matthew Parker's an incredibly successful um, writer, kind of journalist, and he tackles all sorts of eras and subjects, not just a, just a history, um, and he's had numerous bestsellers. And his book on Monte Cassino, which is about 20 years old, I think is kind of set the gold gold standard of, of uh, incorporating veterans' accounts and this, that, and the other. And But I didn't know whether having... It been it been so long since he wrote the book. Whether he'd be interested uh, in coming on and talking about it. I mean, a lot of writers move on from their subjects, but he said yes. And more importantly, when I asked him what he'd like to talk about, he said I wanted I want to talk about the veterans I got to meet and how they coped with their experiences there. So not necessarily just explaining what they did in the campaign, but what it what effects it had on their latter life. He's going to be talking about Spike Milligan. So. As you know, who follow the channel, I'm a massive Spike Milligan fan, the British comedian, writer, poet, TV star, who was in the Italian campaign in World War II and suffered heavily from PTSD. So Matthew will be talking about his, his conversations with Spike Milligan and others and how some of them came back with, um, you know, alcohol issues and all sorts of things like that. So that's a that's another important, what I think is an important show we do on this channel. There are some history shows. It's all just about, here's a battle, here's a battle, here's a battle, here's a battle, this, look at this tank, look at this aircraft. And we do some of those sh shows as, as well. But I think a show like this, where it looks at the personal um, wounds these men and women received, it goes, it ties in very nicely, this one, with Roberto's show. So uh, they'll be, I think, in the same week, in the, in the latter part of May. So looking forward to that one and how how his interactions with these veterans. So it was probably 25 years ago. So they would have been in their kind of in their 60s, 70s, rather than the veterans now being in their in their 90s. That's that's I'm really pleased. We don't know Mark Matthew Parker's a Monte Cassino book, and you want to read one Monte Cassino book before the series starts. I'd recommend Matthew, recommend Matthews or Peter Caddick Adams uh, Monte Cassino book. I haven't. Heard back from Peter PCA yet? I'm hoping he'll come on and do something about the battle. Watch this space. Um, as soon as I hear from him, I'll let you know. This one may not actually be in May. It may be later in the year because Caroline is writing a a, a new a, another book. And Caroline is a is something of a legend in in historical writing. She's she's an amazing writer, and she wrote this fantastic book. In fact, I've got it beside me uh, about about the women partisans. So. Again, not absolutely connected directly with Monte Cassino, but we'll be talking about what has been happening in Italy, what was happening in Italy. Don't forget, as the Allies pushed driving up north, the work of the resistance up there as you get towards the Alps became even more important. You get SAS raids, things like that going on in over the winter. And Andreas, to address your question earlier, there'll be a second series of shows later in the year about the, the winter 44-45 campaign in Italy. So this one will kind of, start february march 44 and take us up to about june we will go to a little bit after the casino campaign it's kind of loose the boundaries but caroline is a legend again someone when i emailed her and said we'd like to come on i, I didn't necessarily even expect to get a reply she's very very well regarded and when she came back and said yeah sure uh, i'm just busy in may but it may we may fit it in may if not it'll be later on but really excited about that one we got to bring in the kiwis you've got to bring in the new zealanders um uh, the Australians have, have gone back to the, to the Pacific Theatre by this point. They'd fought through, through uh, in North Africa and what have you, but the Australians do not really take part in the, in the Italy campaign, although there are Australian pilots there, but the, the New Zealanders did. And Glenn Harper is, you know, he's the he's the Peter Caddick Adams of New Zealand. He's the James Holland of New Zealand. Glenn Harper is highly regarded, highly rated. He always comes on, does a really, you know, um, well-worked out, well-honed, Good presentation, boom, boom, boom. Good maps, good photos. So I can't wait to hear his view on the uh, the, the New Zealand contribution to the battle. India. Uh, now, so far, I've only got one graphic made. I'm hoping that there'll be two shows about 
the Indians. So one will be about the 4th Indian Division, which actually includes some British troops, notably some of the Essex Regiment, my, my county. That I'm working on right now, not done the graphic yet. That will be with a British historian who teaches at Sandhurst. So the 4th Indian Division were commanded by Francis Tucker. And if you haven't heard of him, he is just one of the most amazing commanders of World War II. One of Al Murray's favorites is, is Tucker. But I do have this show set up. So the 8th Infantry Division, 8th Indian, Indian Infantry Division. So Mandeep is coming on. So again, you, you know the score. If you're going to talk about Indian troops, bring on someone from India. Mandeep is highly regard, regarded. Does lots of talking about um, um, current uh, political and military issues in India and, and, and that part of the world. And so Mandeep is working, squirreling away right now to talk about the 8th Indian Div Infantry Division. The chap on the left in that photo there is a Victoria Cross recipient. So I'm hoping Mandeep will dive into the kind of the different um, religious elements of the Indian army. You've got Urdu speaking and, and you've got Hindus and Muslims and, and Sikhs. And, and I'm hoping he'll kind of break down some of the cultural um, background of the Indian division and, of course, the epic role they had within the battle. Um, can't talk about Italy without talking about the air power. So Luke is coming on again. Luke. Um, is just doing this for us. Luke is busy teaching, marking. It's marking seasons right now. And Luke uh, recently appeared on the on the, the Masters of the Air panel with John McManus um, a couple of weeks ago. And Luke is working on a, uh, a presentation, as you can see there, Operation Strangles. That's the air interdiction. So so Luke is fantastic. So that'll be talking about B-26s and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, 15th Air Force, 12th Air Force, and also uh, British units, you know, bombing in there and doing all that kind of stuff there um so so that will come up um yeah that's the, the the end of the slides of the, the graphics i've done so far you'll notice that as yet there's no polish content there will be polish content i'm working on uh at least two shows one the grandson of someone who fought with the polish armored brigade through there and then a second one about the, the polish part of of the battle of monte cassino there may or may not be more uh polish content um we'll see um I'm really lucky uh, that when I approach people, they 99 times out of 100, they say yes. And there are few people who don't say yes. It's because one particular historian said, I, I just don't like to do it. I don't, I'm not comfortable doing it. I get very nervous. And I don't like doing it. I'd rather that my writing is, is represents my, my studies. That's fine. But 99% of people I, I speak to come back and, and I can't, I, I'm not, I can't ever be thankful and grateful enough for those historians who came on in the early year of, of World War II TV, that first lockdown era that seems so far in the past now. Some of them are friends of mine anyway, but others I just contacted out the blue. I'm thinking of people like Dr. Mike Bechtold, uh, um, some of those people in the early days, James Jeffries and well, Alan Allport, who I didn't know. And they came on and did presentations when it was all a bit clunky and we used Zoom and sometimes the internet would freeze and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And we still get the occasional technical problems, as you know. So, but now these people come and say yes. And I get con emails all the time from people saying, hello, can I come on? I've got a book about this or I'm researching this. And um, yeah, just to, just to, just to echo um, what... I'm trying to do on this channel. So a top quality line that must take a lot of time and effort, Woody. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so it was Friday or was it Thursday? Friday, I did 174 emails. So this is a good way of reminding you the financial burden I'm under. Okay. So I was a full-time battlefield guide. That's what I've been doing for 20 years. And I've always say this, if I stopped World War II TV tomorrow and I went back to guiding, I could make more money in less time more easily right but i love this more but it takes hours and hours and hours. don't just see the hour i'm on with a guest talking about the stuff although i'm still doing five or six of these a week often um it's the time in between it's the emails it's the communications it's the research i do it's the graphics i have to make it's putting all the listings on youtube typing out all the information etc 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 um that takes time um i love it and i do give myself days off uh but often i'm i'm on my computer at sort of nine o'clock in the morning and i'm still bashing out stuff on the computer nine and ten o'clock at night i don't sit here all the time i go and eat and i cuddle the cats and stuff like that but it is a lot of work okay so um to support me financially please consider becoming a patron please consider just you know five or a month you know, it's the old cliche. I know I hate and I hate this bit. 
I hate the kind of uh, putting my cap out there, blah, blah, blah. But I need to pay the bills and uh, say World War II TV is my job now. Um, so if you're a regular watcher, um, please just consider becoming a patron at the lowest level if you if if you if you if you can or the, the medium level whatever, or a YouTube channel member. Um, and I know so, that YouTube is changing the way it works with advertising now, so it, it does mean you may get uh, midstream adverts uh, in some of the shows now, which is something like, that's harder to control than it used to be. I won't go into the specifications of it, but it's getting diff difficult and complicated. Um, so, so people who are patrons, so Fox Rock Romeo, so glad to be a patron, support the channel, best investment. Um, we appreciate your dedication very much. Another one there, a uh, patron is worth it. It just helps me out. Okay. So, you know, I say I'm not very good when I do the live shows of doing the, don't forget to subscribe. And though I, I just want to get into history, but every now and then I kind of do this kind of heartfelt plea. And as I said at the beginning of this little show, you know, I went through a bit of a slump motivation wise a few weeks ago. I'm out of that now, and I could not be more excited about Monte Cassino series. And and there's lots more D-Day content, and well, I, I should say more correctly, Battle of Normandy content. I was in contact with this story, and in fact, they contacted me. A new book about the first division, the US first division is coming out. And the author and the agent assumed I'd want to talk about D-Day with them. And I said, well, you know, to be fair, we've done that. Can we talk about the Battle of Comor? Uh, sort of three weeks later. And the guy is really pleased. Oh, yeah, I'd love to talk about that. So we will be hitting those areas inland, metaphorically and literally, that don't get talked about. Who's heard of the Comor Gap? You bet you haven't heard of the Comor Gap. Well, we were talking about that. Um, we may be doing something about the air campaign in Normandy. We'll be doing some stuff about the Battle of Cherbourg, I hope. Um, but then very, very quickly, it will become the 80th anniversary of Bagration. So I want to do some more Eastern Front stuff in June. This is the annoying thing about this year, is there's so many anniversaries I'm trying to acknowledge. By the way, just on that subject. So this year, thank you very much, Phil, for your for your, um, your donation there. Thank you very much for becoming a men uh, member, uh, Patipus. Um I mention every now and then these theme weeks that don't seem that don't ever happen on the channel. Well, one of the things is while I'm tying in with these 80th anniversaries, um, that's the, the majority of my content. So obviously this year, lots of anniversaries. Next year, being the 80th anniversary of 1945, there'll be lots of um, you know stuff up to VE Day in May. Then of course in July and August, it'll be the 80th anniversary of, um, of Okinawa and the atomic bombs. And then when we do the anniversary of VJ Day. Then the last next the set the second half of next year, I'm sure I'll be moving into things like the displaced displacement camps, the Nuremberg trials, the uh, reconstruction. I want to touch, although it's World War II TV, I think the next six months year is valid. I won't be moving into Korea or you know or Malaya campaign or anything like that. But I think those next you know few months it's important to cover that. But then the next year, if I if I live so long, 2026, when there'll be no 80th anniversaries, although technically you go back to Sino-Japanese War and the beginnings of the Spanish Civil War. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do. The uh, the theme weeks that haven't fitted logically into the last couple of years. So, for example, um, I want to do at least a week, probably two weeks, where we go one by one through the neutral countries in World War II. So Spain, Sweden, Switzerland. Not They don't all begin with S, but see, a lot of them seem to. Um, Turkey. And we kind of talk about how they worked neutrality and whether they were really neutral or whether they were, you know, like the Irish, they are neutral, but mostly on the side, pretty much 100% on the side of the Allies. Uh, Switzerland, it's not quite so easy. So that'll be really good. So some, and some of the things about oral histories, PTSD, um, concepts like infantry top doctrine, tank doctrine, that's the kind of stuff we'll cover in 2026, 2027 when we don't have the anniversaries, of course, we will go stay, we'll go back to a, you know, market garden, D-Day and Battle of the Bulge, all that kind of stuff. And as you say, Andreas, when we get to uh, uh, 2030, uh, uh, when I'll be older than I am, I'll be, I'll, I'll, be in, I'll be in my 60s then. Good grief. Anyway, that's when we can go back and start it all again with the 90th, 90th anniversary of 1940. So there you are. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I will be with you again in f six hours' time with Holly Harris talking about POWs in, in the uh, Baltic. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much for your support. Again, 
I can't wait to bring you this Monte Cassino series. They're, they're, those slides I showed, they're not all of them. They'll probably end up being about 20, maybe 22, 23 separate Monte Cassino shows. There'll be some um, in the morning when I'm with Australian New Zealand guests or late at night, if you're that part of the world. And there'll be some, the usual 7 p.m. UK time and some in the middle of the day. And hopefully, I really want to get a panel discussion to end the Monte Cassino week uh, where we kind of talk about what happened next. The panel discussions are always very popular on the channel. They are really, they are the hardest to organize because you've got to try and get people's schedules in alignment and work around time zones. So there we are. That's an update for you. Um, I'm off to do um, some cooking. I've got to make a macaroni cheese because um, stepdaughter number two is arriving with her boyfriend in a few hours' time and Mag's out on tour, so I've got to do some cooking, do a bit of housework, cuddle the cats, and um, try and have a bit of an afternoon off. So I will see you all next time. In the meantime, thank you very much, as always, for your ongoing support. And if you are support, if you are not subscribed yet, again, just press that button. It takes a second for you, but makes a huge difference to me. But I'll see you all next time. This is Paul Woodard for World War II TV saying enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon. Bye.